Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new class of the Green Hero Community. Nice to see you here. Thank you for joining. Can you hear me? Are we fine here? Let's go to start this class talking about biophilic design for sustainable interiors. So we will have amazing strategies to share here with you guys. And let's put this mind map for you. Okay, so let's go on. I will share my screen for you guys. Just one second. And let's start this live class here. All right. Let's go on. Some people are still joining, but let's proceed. Let's proceed. And let's go uh, start in this class. Okay, guys. So uh, this is the presentation. Biophilic design for sustainable interiors. Can you see everything here? Can you see the mind map? Please tell me in the chat, please. All right, biophilic design for sustainable interiors. So these are the team. This will be my presentation today. So which are the goals that I have for you here? Okay. We are going to understand the best biophilic design strategies for sustainable interiors, how to connect biophilic design with sustainability, also, also, we will know the most prominent mistakes designers make when applying nature into their designs and what biophilic design techniques you can use to get more clients for your practice. Also, how to improve your professional recognition using those strategies as a sustainable interior designer. So we are going to merge these two things here biophilia with sustainable in cheers. Please tell me in the chat, guys, which of these goals is the most important for you on this class? Which one of these five? You can say one, two, three, four, five. Okay, please tell me here in the chat. I would love to know. Okay. One, two, some people is telling all five. All right, let's take a look on. All right, bring me the mistakes. Nice, nice. Yeah, okay. Bring me the mistakes. Yeah, we have lots of things to cover related to the mistakes. We are, we are going to cover mainly uh, things related to light. Use the use of light on biophilic design and this connection of light with sustainability. Lots of people make these mistakes. They tend to, to use uh, lots of plants or they tend to get uh, lots of daylight inside the space. So it can be a huge mistake, but we are going to, to cover that on the, on the main subject, on the main class, all right? So let's go on here. Thank you for, for telling me here in the chat. And let's go on, let's proceed. So guys, um, it's important to, to understand, right? Interiors with sustainable futures have never been more in demand before, uh, right? Uh, today, we have lots of demand on that, especially on the commercial sector, okay? So what we, we, can, we, we can say uh, here, we understand that we have lots of benefits on using nature for selling. For example, uh, companies in the retail companies understand that you use nature. And maybe you are seeing, I don't know if you are seeing lots of spa different spaces. We have trees inside stores now. We have some different things happening. And people understand that it increases sales, but not just related to the sales and not just related to um let's say uh a more productive space so people can work inside the spaces they can be more productive but they understand also that the um, we have benefits not just related to the beauty not just for being productive of or have a, a space that sells better but we have uh also this possibility of enhancing the the company level so the company level when they have people understand that this company is more sustainable they are going to have this company in mind and usually this these companies they are going to to have better uh results in in the shorter or even of course the longer term better but the sh in, in short term as well so this will be 
very important and so especially in the commercial sector and this can help in the career of people who are starting so let's say if you are starting in this field if you are starting uh thinking about sustainability this can help you right this can be uh, so nice for you because you can use those strategies to have benefits and to have uh, better projects and and find this sp find space in those companies and also for people who are looking for differentials so maybe if you are a person who is more experienced uh you have uh, you are working for some years in this field so you can use those strategies to uh, get a better level actually on your design okay so this is the the context this is the importance of using biophilic design nowadays however people are a little lost on how to use those concepts because the, uh, this is the main problem. Usually people, they are thinking about biophilic design, but they are not connecting biophilia with sustainability. Maybe you are seeing mistakes like this. So they are using uh, some biophilic design strategies, but they are, they are not addressing sustainability at the same time. And in this class, I want to expand this possibility so you will understand the the, what I'm talking about here. So uh, mainly, of course, in relation to application of nature, sometimes nature is applied and sustainability is lost in the process. So people are trying to use nature and they are losing some sustainable possibilities on those projects. And so beauty, mental stimulation, health and sustainability must be full balanced for us to get those benefits. Okay, so we need to balance all those things sustainability and mental health, because we understand that biophilic design enhances mental health, right? We are using strategies to enhance our cognition. We are using strategies to improve our uh, possibilities on, on be more aware on the environment that we are. We get more alert. We, we have some some uh, things that our neurocortex are, is processing. So we are going to have a better mental health. And we want to keep balance on all those things. So this is so important. Uh, do you understand, guys? Uh, it's uh, I'm just asking here on this part. Um, do you think this way as well? Do you think that these things should be balanced? Do, do you understand the importance of that? Please tell me here in the chat. I would love to know if you guys agree with me here on the subject. Uh, if you understand that biophilic design and sustainability should be, we need to, to understand the balance between those two things. Okay, thanks guys, thank you. All right, people are replying. I will have my coffee here. Thanks, Angelica, nice. Just to see if everyone is in the same page, okay? And in the next steps, we are going to understand how to put this into practice, right? Because this will certainly help you on this thing, okay? Um, guys, please tell me also here, but let's... Uh, let's uh, I uh, get this, this moment here also. Tell me guys who you are in your professions, just for me to, to understand here. And then maybe I can address a little more related to the most people here on this. Okay, interior designer, interior design fresh graduate, sustainable architect, nice. Architect interior designer, architect in urban designer, civil engineer, architecture student, architecture fresh graduate, interior designer. Let's see, let's see. Right. Lots of fresh people here. You didn't see the, the whole picture, maybe. But you will. <laughs> you will. You certainly will see the whole picture. Okay, guys. Um, tell me also in the chat, we, what are your main challenges on sustainability for interior design? If you, if you are already a person that has more experience in this field, or if you are just starting, if you never heard anything about so tell me guys the idea of sustainability in interior design okay just for us to to understand as well here okay so let's go on uh tell me your main challenges okay on sustainability for interior design cost reduction and choice of materials okay nice let's see ma uh, maintenance nice let's see uh some of challenges that you may, may have. I'm trying to start with sustainable design, but finding sustainable materials in my country is hard. Sustainable materials not always available. Sustainability, lack of practice within Pakistan related to sustainability, okay. Clients pursuing space, sustainability is for people, 
for people and by people, okay? The main challenge is to, to find sustainable furniture for real. The telling, Sam is here, Sam is listening. You guys, Sam is my partner here. He's, uh, she's going to be very happy to understand about uh, that your main issues are related to materials, durability, pricing costs, public awareness, how to use greeners for interiors, expensive and software related problem. My main challenge is to find opportunity to implement why I haven't learned about sustainability and well-being, introducing more nature into everyday life. Guys, thank you for, for, for the answer. Thank you. All right. So we are going to, to dive into the main content here, the biophilic design for sustainable interiors. Guys, when we are talking about biophilic design, we have lots of categories. And of course, during this class, we can cover all this 72. So we can see that we have this... Um, just, just you, uh, environmental. This is in Portuguese, right? Uh, my main language is Portuguese, environmental. Um, let me get here, environmental elements. So we are talking about nature elements. We recognize easily, okay? So we have all these six categories when we are talk of, talking about biophilic design. This is made by Kellert, okay? Kellert is an author. They have, uh, he has uh, many books related to, to biophilic design. This biophilic design is something kind of, that, that, let's not say new, but uh, we started studying the, many, the main things on biophilic design since the 90s. So it's kind of new. And we usually have six categories where we talk about when we are talking about biophilic design, okay? So, yeah, a person is asking, standing here, biophilic design is not for general people because it's very expensive. Um, you will see that not, okay? In many elements are not expensive, all right? So environmental elements. So what is the, is the category here? So we are going to use uh, elements that we recognize easily. So for example, we can use natural colors. This is uh, one uh, environmental element. We can use fire, we can use water. This is very easy to understand. So these are the main strategies related to biophilic design. And we have 12 strategies inside this, this possibility here. Then we have natural shape. This is going to be the second category, okay? So we are going to see shapes that we can evoke natural uh, processes. So for example, we can see um, a column that resembles a tree. It's going to be a natural shape strategy. So we're going to have 11 strategies inside of this. Patterns and natural processes. So we are going to have, for example, let's say we are going to have growth and the fluorescence. So we, when we are using bamboo, we have some natural process happening inside the space. So the bamboo, bamboo is going to grow. We are going to see this bamboo growing over the days. So we are going to see something living and it's going to enhance some mental health to see uh, things happening inside the space, okay? So on this category here, we will have 14 strategies. Light and space, the use of light and space, we are going to increase the relationship between our or uh, of us, right, and, and during the day. So for example, we see that it's morning, we see when it's evening, we see when it's night, we understand. Uh, and for example, if you work in a shopping mall, you are not going to see the day passing by. So your circadian rhythm are going to be, um, it, we are going to weaken our, street, uh, our circadian rhythm. And it's important because to have a strong circadian rhythm, because for example, when is, time to, to have uh, lunch, our body knows that it's time for lunch. So it's time for lunch. So the, the body is processing, right? The enzymes in your stomach, your, your body is feeling the passing of time. So this is important for health as well. Uh, relationships of place. So uh, for example, if you have a historical building, if you have a historical building, your brain, uh, you're not thinking about that. You're just passing by this historical building, but your brain is understanding that things happened before you. So when the, the body understands this, you have a more uh, connection with the space. So you're going to enhance this and it's good for mental health as well. And then evolve the human nature relationship. So for example, you are um, 
near a waterfall, for example, you live near a waterfall. If you understand that, that this waterfall is there, you're going to uh, hear this waterfall. You're going to see uh, maybe water particles. You're going to see, uh, you're going to, to hear the water flowing. You're going to maybe um, hear more intensity, less intensity. So this is another biophysical design element on this category here of evolved human nature relationships. So we have 12 strategies here. So we have all the six categories and you have amazing things inside of each, uh, each of the six categories, but not all of them are connected with sustainability for sustainable interiors, right? For, for interiors. So we need to understand that we are going to see the stretches more related to sustainability today, okay? So we are going to connect that with sustainability, all right? Can you understand this, guys? Please tell me here in the chat. I would love to know. And if you understood these categories, these overall categories on biophysical design, and then we can go to the 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 real thing here the real content thanks guys thank you so when we are talking about environmental elements i'm not going to expand all the the strategies here okay so we can see we were talking about 12 strategies we are just going to take a look into five strategies because these are more related to sustainability so when we are talking about plants, for example, plants are, is the most, uh, uh, it's what usually people think on biophysical design. So I just want to talk about plants and remove that uh, from our, our path. So you can see here, right, uh, plants, we understand that there is a source of food, uh, uh, generation of security. This, this usually when you have plants inside a space, this improves our, our sense of comfort and well-being. But this is a thing that is important to understand. For sustainable design, for healthy uh, environments, do plants eliminate VOCs? So what do you think, guys? Do plants eliminate VOCs? Uh, tell me your opinion here in the chat, please, because I would love to expand that. This is one big curiosity when we are talking about sustainability inside spaces, because VOCs are volatile organic compounds. These are the are elements uh, that are not good for health. And plants can maybe improve that or not. I would love to know your opinion about this. Okay, it depends. Okay, it depends on, on what. Let's see. VOCs are volatile organic compounds. These are, are particles that uh, chemical compounds that we have in the atmosphere. For example, if you have a use, uh, depending on the type of paint that you use, usually the most common paints you have VOCs, and this can uh, decrease your health. Okay, so if you breathe this VOCs, or if these VOCs uh, make contact with your eye, you can have uh, health problems with this. Okay, so. I think not, yes. Yeah, this is a good thing because uh, we had this, this idea that plants eliminate VOCs and we got, a, we, got, we got a study from NASA, okay? So how we can, um, we can uh, figure those things. So there was a rumor or, or, or rumor originated by NASA in 1989 called Interior Landscape Plants for Air Pollution Abatement. So there was this study, and at the time, they studied ways to eliminate VOCs, right? Such as benzene, formaldehyde, and trichloroethylene. Uh, uh, that is it's hard for me to speak that in English. It's trichloroethylene. Semi. Yeah. Trichlora. Tell me, tell me this word here, please. Oh. Uh... Trichloroethylene. Okay, thanks. All right, let's go on. Trichloroethylene, yes. Trichloroethylene, yeah, thanks. You have to, to make different things. Like Sam is my English teacher here. Yeah, sometimes I don't get it right though. <laughs> Okay, so understanding this is so important, guys, because, uh, of course, it's, it was important to, to these people, right? So people were developing spaceships or things like this, so they, they don't have natural ventilation. And they understood that VOCs are not eliminated just uh, simply by filters, right? So these people, they understood that you could have plants 
and a person would need at least one house plant per uh, uh, one square meter here. So this was published by NASA. And of course, this works for spaceships. Okay, but we people saw, okay, this works in spaceships and they saw this study they, and they said, okay, so this works for homes as well. So we can put homes, uh, plants into homes and then we are going to remove your seeds. Okay, but plants have many benefits, but not this because in homes we have natural ventilation and uh, the amount of your seeds that plants can remove, it's it's not going to happen when you have natural ventilation inside the space, okay? But NASA wasn't wrong. We are not telling that NASA was wrong. They were right. But considering that you are in a spaceship and you don't have natural ventilation in spaceships, right? So this is uh, the major thing. So the test was carried inside a spaceship. And of course, people uh, went there. They, they, people read this and they, and they thought it was the right thing. But actually... Benefits, uh, we have benefits using plants, right? So spending time with house, house plants, we will have a related physical and mental stress, anxiety. We're going to reduce, reduce anxiety. The plants in your environment will bring lots of sorts of benefits for, for physical health. We can use in bedrooms. Uh, bedrooms, we can have better sleep quality. We will have, for example, uh, if you have something inside a, a, your office, you can have many benefits as well. And even if plants don't clear uh, VOCs from the air, they will clear some mold. They will clear some bacteria. We are going to remove some mildew or, or dust. So plants are a good thing. But this is a, a myth here related to VOCs, right? People, uh, uh, lots of people say that, that plants remove VOCs. Even us, some years ago, we were uh, reading those things, and then we started to to take a look closely, and we understood that. So plants even make you more compassionate person and fulfill uh, social relationships. So plants have all these good benefits. So plants is one of these biophilic design elements that you can use inside interior uh, spaces, okay? Natural materials. So when we are talking about natural materials, of course, when we are using stones and all those things, we are going to uh, enhance health inside our spaces. But when we are talking about sustainability, we need to understand that these natural materials, they need to be uh, uh, extracted, right? We need to have this sourced. We need to have this uh, manufactured um, closely, right? So it's important that you have this as a regional material, right? Regionality is going to be important. Regionality. And also when we are talking about materials, when we are talking about industries, right? When you have people who are, um, who are telling their materials sustainable, we need to look at all those things, right? Extraction practices of those materials because this will be related to sustainability, right? We said in previous classes, right? The, the example of bamboo, if it's a children extracting the bamboo, the bamboo is a material, a sustainable material, but if there is a children extracting this bamboo, it's not sustainable anymore. The manufacturing process, right? So maybe this bamboo is a sustainable material, but it's extracted, uh, it's, it's manufactured in a way that you have pollution. Okay, so this is one, one thing. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, a person said here, uh, 100 square, uh, square feet is, is 10 meters, almost 10 meters, okay? Not one meter, I, I forgot to, to say. So manufacturing process. Uh, we are going to have this, um, so for example, the bamboo sustainable, we will have the manufacturing and one part of the process, you have lots of pollution. So it's not, not, not a sustainable material anymore. And then we need to look on ingredients, right? So as we were telling, the healthiness of this material. So this material is healthy, uh, which chemicals people are using, maybe in contact with human people, right? We human beings and we are going to have problems. So this is nat natural materials. This is important. When we are talking about uh, environmental elements, of course, we want to have views to the outside. So this is a project we had developed uh, some years ago. We had a very uh, um, a big view here. So we wanted to have view for the this area here outside. So when we have views, we are going to have amazing uh, benefits. We need to look at outside. We need to look at the... The, the sky, we need to look at plants, we need to look at animals or maybe people passing by. 
So this is a, a, a thing that are, that is going to straight um, to straightening your uh, straight, straighten your circadian rhythm as well. Uh, this is a project that we were we worked on uh, ten years ago, right? We participated in this project, and in this building here, we needed to uh, we were certifying it, so we needed to look on the outside. So see the, the quality views that we have. So this is a credit from, from need. So we need to have at least uh, 90 degrees to, for, to look for the, the outside and have a view on this 90 degrees here. So we want to have a view for, for a part there or maybe another uh, situation. So it's important to have quality views. So uh, it's another sustainability possibility. So when we are talking about views, it's a biofilter design element but also for sustainability as well, right? So we are enhancing health. And of course we can talk about natural light here, but we are not going to talk about natural light here because I will talk in this fourth part here, okay? Green facade is the same thing, right? We need to understand that we can use that in our, um, in our tune design It's like plants, right? We can use inside. And of course we are going to enhance sustainability inside our, our project, right? Sometimes the, the green facade, we can enhance the thermal uh, possibilities here, right uh, there. So for example, you, the U value is going to increase a little bit when using plants. This can be good for your design. Okay, so green facades very quickly. And the colors. So understanding about colors is important, but understanding also that depending on the natural colors that you are using inside your space, you are going to increase or decrease the amount of lighting inside your space. Let's see if I have the Alex software here, just to get this idea for you guys. Uh, do we need to check all those points when choosing a natural material? Yes, absolutely. We need to check all those, those uh, possibilities because sometimes you have a natural material, but you have problems related to, to the manufacturing process or maybe destruction process. So it's natural, you are seeing that, but maybe you are you, you are having problems with this. I'm just opening Dialux here. Dialux is a, it's a lighting software. So depending on the, the colors of the materials that you have inside your space, you're going to decrease or, or increase or decrease the amount of light inside your space. Let's see, let's see. Um, Okay, I will try to, to open here a, a project. Um, just wanna, uh, it's not a project, it is one, one of our last classes we, we opened this file here. Let me, I'm just opening here, just one second. Okay, can you see the screen here, guys? Can you see this dialogue software? Can you see this thing here? So uh, here we are analyzing, for example, we, we just made a, uh, in one of our classes, we made just one, we just uh, made some, uh, some, a very quick test. And we shared you guys so much, some materials on this. We just made it make a, 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 we just made a dark room and we can see that we have here some colors, for example, so we have this, um, let me get some, some color here very quickly. Some catalogs, materials, colors. Okay, so we are, let's just for so, so you can understand the idea of what I'm talking about. Let's say I will get a natural color, just like the, the color that we, we found out there. So just trying to, to get a natural color. And what is the relation of color with sustainability? Colors have amazing benefits. When you have natural colors, it's going to be, it's, it's going to enhance your biophilic, um, it's going to enhance your biophilic uh, feeling, right? So this is important. And let's say I'm just going to use this yellow everywhere and I'm going to make a simulation of light inside this space. So let's see that. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so we made a simulation here. Let's just get this overview out. And let's take a look on the on the space here. Oh, not, not here, here. Just, um, yeah. 
why it's not showing the results just just make a new calculation so we have this yellow uh space here okay so we have this yellow space here we can see and we can see that we we have uh 500 lux in this space here right 500 lux for an office is a good amount of light of course it's not we can see that the tables are not related to the lighting, right? It's just a random space here, but we can see that we have this amount of light. And let's say we are going to use a uh, white color now. Okay, so I will, I'm going to open here just to explain one concept, uh, one concept very quickly here for you guys. And if we use a light color, a white color inside this space, we are going to have another we are going to have another uh, light distribution. We are going to, to enhance light distribution inside this space. Okay, so let's just add this. I'm just adding here randomly, okay? We, we, you don't need to use uh, white everywhere. Usually when we are talking about sustainability, we are talking about 20% of, of uh, reflectances and 60% on walls and 80% on the, the roof. It's important that the roof is lighter. So we can see that now we have 700 lux inside the space here. Can you, can you see that we have increased the amount of light inside the space since we painted the walls white? And so we can save energy. Maybe we can use less, less luminaires inside the space. So let's say I will get this, uh, this lamps here, and now I can decrease the amount of lamps. Okay, so I can decrease here on dialogues. I can use uh, less lamps maybe. Maybe we can use two here. Okay, and we can recalculate that and see how, how it goes. Oh, it's the wrong, the wrong, uh, sorry. Just one second. Uh, I will select again. I'm just showing you one concept, okay, related to sustainability inside spaces. Let's go on. Oh no, wrong again. Just uh, now select the lamps again, and I will select, let's see, it's, it's three lamps here. No, it's three here and two here. And we can recalculate. So we are using less lamps now. Let's see if we can find this 500 lux that we wanted. So uh, well, what, what I'm saying guys, yeah, we even have more. So we are using less lamps and we are getting uh, even more light. We could make, make it, uh, we, we could do that even better. So what I'm telling you here is this relationship here. So if this space is lighter, we are going to use less lighting inside our space. So it's important that you understand this. It's going to be more sustainable, right? Light, lighter spaces are going to be usually more sustainable when we are talking about artificial light possibilities. This is a, a, a good concept that you can understand. Could you understand this, guys? Could you understand this concept where, uh, that I discussed here? So for example, you can use uh, biophilic design elements. You can use these elements. These natural colors are amazing, but you don't maybe want to use in the, the entire space, right? So it's important that you, you can have a biophilic design space, but uh, you will need lots of light. So it's not going to be that sustainable. So it's important that you balance all those things. Nice guys, nice that you understood. Thank you for, for, uh, to, for telling me this. Okay, so let's go on. So we were talking about colors. Then we will have uh, natural forms. So all these natural forms, I, I don't want to stress all those things now, okay? So biomimetics, we can use biomimetics. We can use columns and, and that is going to support, for example, in the shape of a tree. We can use uh, animal patterns. We can use shells and spirals. We can use uh, tubular shapes. Uh, for example, this shape here, right? We can use that inside our spaces on our interior design. The problem when we are using this on biophilic design is that you we need to have the same, the same uh, things that we were talking here. We need to understand where these materials are extracted, sources, manufactured, that we are going to look for regionality. 
we are going to require labels for for this let's see uh yeah so this will be important on this situation as well this is this is going to be the same uh situation and natural botanical pattern is the same so depending on the shape that you can use you can find the meaning for example this resembles a tree right you can use that and it's going to to uh you are going to find the meaning of a tree and this is a biophilic design uh element that, that you can use to enhance mental health so people are going to have this meaning they are going to find meanings they they are looking for other things they are reading newspaper in the airport for example but they look for this and they think about a tree they're finding meaning behind things so this is a a, a very uh important thing for mental health so if you are using this, of course, do that with sustainable materials. So this is the, the main thing. Then natural process, patterns and processes. This will be very important things as well. So growth and efflorescences. So when we are talking about this, um, bamboos that are growing over time, I already told you about this. So usually ornamentations are elements like this that can generate the feeling of pleasure and satisfaction. And of course, when you are using plants, we need to use plants that are native or adaptive, right? Uh, plants that, that are adapted to the situation. So this is uh, the connection with uh, sustainability with biophilic design elements. When we are talking about dynamic ba ba balances and tension, so we, we are discovering those things. We are analyzing the space and let's say we have a, a, an old space and you are putting something new there, we are going to have this, this tension, this balances of design. And of course, we need to make this with sustainable materials as well. And of course, balance all the other sustainability measures, daylight and energy efficiency and all those things together. So this is the, the connection with sustainability that I wanted to, to bring you here in a simpler way. So this will be another thing. So natural patterns and processes. When we are talking about lighting and space, this will be the biggest thing when we are talking about the connection of biophilic design with sustainability. So for example, we are talking about natural light, right? So when we are talking about this, of course, we need to see the full spectrum of natural light and we need to have a good amount of light inside our, inside our spaces. But the problem is sometimes we will have problems related to glare. So let me try to, to find some, some uh, situation here what I want what I um, then I wanted to give you here. So uh, we use a software. Let's see. Let me try to open a, a file here. We use a software called Cove Tool for, for some of our analysis. And I'm going to open this project very quickly here, project that, that we are under development. And this project here, we can see that we have natural light, right? We have uh, other ways to analyze light. We have even free softwares to, to make this. But we are analyzing light distribution, okay? So light distribution inside the space. These blue areas here are underlit areas. So we are analyzing the complete year, and we are analyzing this area. So when we are dealing with natural light, of course, we want to have the, uh, the highest amount of light, uh, light possible. So maybe I can change the, the glazing properties inside my building. So let's change this now. Let's put this as 0 0.69, for example. It's going to be a, almost a non-color glazing, right? So we are going to process this again. And let's take a look on how, uh, how SDA is going to be, okay? So let's see, let's see. It's going to, to analyze again with a clearer glazing. Now we have a clearer glazing, right? A cheaper glazing also. So we can change this, this, uh, this possibilities here. Let's wait some, some seconds for this to process. Let's wait some seconds. All right, let's let's wait some seconds here. Okay. While it's processing, just for you to understand, we are analyzing the complete year. We are analyzing 300 lux for at least 
50% of the hours of the project, we are going to analyze and we are going to start 9 a.m., 8 a.m. and start this, uh, stop this at 6 p.m. So we are analyzing this. Yeah, we, we decrease uh, the, the unlated areas of my project. Now we have this, uh, we have more light inside my space, but we have a problem that is glare. So when we click here, we have glare. So we have more than 100 lux in more than 250 hours of the year. So this is a glare area. This is a glare area. How we can decrease this glare. So this is our connection that we can have with biophilic design. When we think about this, so we want to have natural light inside our spaces, but we want to have this balance of biophilia, see the light passing by, but see if our space have a good amount of light. So we need to understand the amount of, of openings that we have, we're going to have more light, we are going to have more distribution, but we are going to have more glare at the same time. So maybe we can decrease the openings a little bit. Or if you are an interior designer and the, the space are already developed, maybe you can change the glazing, right? So change the glazing properties, we are going to decrease or increase the amount of light inside our spaces, but we can enhance, uh, increase glare as well, right? So th that will be a problem. So natural light is, a, is an important thing. When we are talking about filtered and diffused light, so we are going to have this thing here. So you, you have this F effect here from this amazing office from Banish Architects. So you can see that we have this filtered light so you can see that is not a big amount of light in, in our space but what resembles us this space here tell me here in the chat guys what what this uh if you were in nature what would that be in nature for example so we are evoking something that is related to nature tell me guys in the chat here if you understand this let's see Three branches, yes, exactly. Nice, nice, nice. Benelin, amazing. So you are uh, uh, under a tree, right? So you, the, the tree are going to have this feeling. So this is a, an amazing thing. You have more light here. You see more light, you see less light. So this is a, an effect that you can use in your projects that you are going to enhance by a design. But of course you need to make a simulation to understand if you are really uh, have a, you, if you have a good balance, if you have too much glare, and when you have too much glare, you are going to have this, this, you're going to do this with your eye here, let's say. You're going to do this, right? When you have lots of glare. And you are going to have more heat inside your space. So you're going to need more air conditioner to when you have a, a hot, a hot situation, right? When, when you are in the summer or something like this. Okay, so can you understand this, guys? Uh, can you understand this concept? Are, are you understanding that biophilia and sustainability, you need to find a balance between these two things, not too many plants. So you put lots of plants and you are removing natural light inside your space, so it's not going to be sustainable. You are putting plants in your, at your window, sorry. I want to give a, uh, there was a question. Yesterday, guys, um, I had the opportunity to, <laughs> um, yesterday I had the opportunity to talk about uh, biophilic design to the Interior Design um, Architects Association in Uruguay. And they had a question that I thought it was really nice. And they said, what is the difference between biophilic design uh, and just, the use of organic things and an organic design, they, they call it organic design. And I think uh, the difference between you just using organic and natural materials versus biophilic design is the intention. All right, so I thought it was a really good question as far as what, uh, what makes so different, everything seems to be so normal when we talk about all these strategies. But the idea is that you are not just using strategies, you're using strategies with in the right intention, with the right purpose for this particular project. So in case you are using plants, 
you're not just going to scatter plants around for some reason. You're going to use the right type of plants for the right type of environment and the location that you want as a focus point for such and so reason. So that is biophilic design. It's the intention into using these strategies. I thought it was a good question that came up yesterday. Very good. I, I enjoyed this. Guys, have you enjoyed this? Please tell me in the chat because I enjoyed this. All right, let's go on. So you understood that we need to balance all those things together, right? Uh, filter and diffuse light, light as shape. So when we are talking about interior design, right? We really want to make, maybe do something like this. We want to create something that is going to be different. Maybe you want to, to have a different type of light inside your space. It's no problem at all. Since you understand that at the overall part of the project, as I was showing here on Dialogues, we need to understand that on the documentation part, we will have lighting density. So we need to decrease lighting density, right? We will have a lighting density here. Of course, this project is not real, it's not complete, it's not near to be complete, it's just, it was just one example. We can see that we have this, this lighting density here, this lighting power density is, is going to be so important, right? And depending on the space that you have, you're going to have a lighting density to, to comply, right? So the, this is very small. Right, don't 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 be attached to this value here. Okay, it's just one uh, random thing that were, that I was doing here, but we need to decrease lighting density. And of course, when you are using some maybe scenographic things, we are using something that is going to be uh, right. It's going to be uh, a decoration. It's important that you understand that you don't want to use that so much that is going to, you're going to have lots of lighting density and of course, uh, remove the sustainability of your design, right? So this is an important thing. Uh, lighting shadow, okay? Lighting shadow is an amazing concept. So for example, you could have a space with more light and less light is something that is going to be when you are in nature, if you are in a forest, for example, you are going to have spaces with more light and less light. So it's a thing that is natural. But the problem is when you have a contrast, for example, of one to 10, you are is going to harm your vision. So let me get the dialogues example here once again. Uh, when you are using, for example, dialogues and you have this space. So you have this space here and you have, for example, 500 lux in this, uh, table part here, and let's say a person is working here, they have 500 lux, and they they look at this wall here, and you have, for example, oh, sorry, you are going to have, for example, uh, 10 lux, right, uh, here. So let's say we are going to have um, 40 lux. So 540, so it's going to be a construct, contra, contra, contrast. contrast of more than uh, one to 10. So you have you are looking for something here that you, you your eye is using an amount of light, then you look there and it's dark. So your eye, you know, gets confused. Your, your brain gets confused on, on, on this. So it's important that you have, if you have, for example, 500 lux here, you want to look there you want to have at least 60 uh, lux, for example, or or even more, right? A little more. So you you won't have you, you won't have this problem with contrast. So uh, it's going to be easier for your work. You're going to be more productive. It's going to be better for your health. So this is the relationship between sustainability and and health benefits of graphic design. And sometimes. People are not looking into those things. They are using shadow, they are using light, but not in the, in the right situation. If you are working, for example, it's not going to be a good thing. So uh, this is important. Also warm lighting. So if you are using warm lighting, of course, uh, this decorative lighting, right? You can use this but you will have maybe problems with the lighting density as I told you before. So warm lighting is a, a very um, interesting thing, interesting thing, right? We see that is a cozy space that you can sit and relax, but if you use that a lot, you're going to mess up with lighting density. So because this light, this warm lighting usually is not as, 
is effective as, for example, um, this type of lighting here that we are seeing here is not that effective for lighting purposes, right? It's for decorative purposes is amazing, but for lighting purposes is not that uh, nice. So it's important that you uh, see the lighting density of your overall project. Then uh, warm lighting, then indoor, outdoor spaces. So for example, if you are using uh, uh, plants and you are use, making transitions between outdoor and indoor spaces, it's important that you address lighting simulation to see if you have uh, glare in your space or you have, uh, usually you are going to have tendency of glare when you have these transitions on outside to inside and you are going to expand those glazings to, to have this, um, this feeling of, of, of making this transition between the outside and inside. So it's going to be a, this, a slighter transition. So it uh, enhances the possibility of glare. So it's important that you take a look on lighting simulation as well. Okay, so uh, this is lighting and space, guys. So uh, Yasmin is asking here, can we say biofield design is imitating a natural environment as much as possible in all design aspects? Is something like this, is you are enhancing feelings, you are enhancing possibilities, you are enhancing, um, yeah, you are, you, are, you are enhancing many things, but people usually think that you can use that just plant. plants are biofield, not, is not the case. Sometimes you're using lots of plants, and you are going to remove, in, you will remove lots of benefits related to sustainability of your project. Okay, so uh, what about UV film? Uh, I don't like this, okay? If you are making a project, do it the right way since the beginning. If you are going to use a UV filter, you are, you know, you are uh, trying to, to mask a thing that you should uh, have done the right way since the beginning. So relationships of space, for example, so local materials, of course, local materials, we are going to have benefits with sustainability, right? Local materials is local, right? So it's, you are going to enhance the possibilities of, of have a sustainable material. But you understood, it's not just local, Maybe you are using, for example, here you can see lots of local materials. But if you are getting this from a, a manufacturer, it's important that you ask them all this extraction process, the ingredients, and the manufacturing process. This will be important. You have labels, you have standards for this, and this is a, a possibility that, that you can use. Then uh, landscape orientation. So when you are orienting your landscape to have benefits of a space, for example, of course, you have this, this amazing view here for the forest. The, the girl here is enjoying this amazing view here. Another possibility, right? Amazing, but it's important that you address the orientation to think about the energy efficiency and uh, ventilation and all those things related to sustainability. Of course, if we wanted to open a parenthesis to, to share these possibilities here, we are going to, to have a, a three hour class more here. It's not the intent, but you understood, of course, it has a relationship with sustainability. Uh, landscape features that define the shape of the building, right? So these are another biophilic design possibility to enhance this, uh, right, this, this benefit. So for example, this Hobbit house here, of course, the use of local materials are going to enhance sustainability. And of course, when you have this uh, possibility here, it's important that you address uh, lighting performance, that you enhance, of course, energy performance. It will tend to be better because it will be a more compressed um, space, usually it will be better for energy efficiency, of course, depending on the situation, but um, it's a possibility that you can use to enhance sustainability of your space, but it's important that you take a look on, on lighting performance as well, because maybe you have a, a, a good um, a thermal comfort inside your space, but you are using lots of light, so you're going to use lots of energy because you don't have light, natural light inside your space. So this is uh, another possibility here. This picture here, just for, for curiosity here, uh, ways that people do things. And geographical connection, of course. So these are possibilities to, to enhance this as well. 
if you are locating right your geography, you you have amazing possibilities to have a more sustainable design, considering your orientation, considering window to wall ratio of buildings and all those things. Not that related to interior design, of course, but I just wanted to, to bring this because it has a relationship with sustainability. And evolve the human nature relationships. What is this? For example, uh, we have, as we said here uh, before, right? We have uh, 12 strategies that we usually uh, can talk about this here, but we just we just got number four. Maybe a change in metamorphosis. Maybe you are using something like this. Of course, you need to do that with thermal materials and uh, considering light inside your space as well. Maybe you are trying to do something very different, but you are messing up with lighting performance inside your space. So when you are trying something different inside your space, try to do this, that. These this simulations that you are going to expand a lot of your possibilities on your designs. All right, guys, can you understand this possibilities here of biophilic design and, and sustainable design and cheer design? Could you understand this possibilities here? Please tell me on the chat. I would love to know. All right. Yes, we understand. Nice. Uh, have you enjoyed these possibilities? Can you see this? Uh, this can help your goals, right? So as we, we told you there, now we're goes for this class nice nice thank you certainly nice nice to know all right nice to know guys okay let's go on so uh this is the closing guys and i will be sending you so some next steps that maybe you can go with us um Biophilic design, biomimicry. Biomimicry is a thing that is inside of biophilic design. So when we are when we are talking here, for example, on this natural forms, biomimicry is going to be here, right? Bio biomimetics uh, and biomimicry, right? So we, it's going to be inside of biophilic design elements. We have a complete class in our platform just related to biomimicry. Okay, guys, so you want to still hear uh, there are some biophilic design strategies for sustainable interiors, some of the best ones here. I just expanded that for you. So you understand some concepts related to biophilia and sustainable interiors. You understood that there are ways that you can connect sustainability, uh, biophilic design with sustainability, right? We understood also that uh, some of the most preeminent mistakes designers make, right? So as we were telling, people are sometimes using some biophilic design elements. They are forgetting the some very uh, important concepts of biophilic design. And then you can't expand the possibilities of your project. You are making mistakes and, and making a more biophilic project, but you are losing... Uh, uh, on the other side. So it's important that you make the balance between those two things and have the, the best benefits. Some of biophilic design techniques you can use to, to get more clients to your practice. So uh, we expanded lots of things here, right? Uh, quickly, right? On this class, we don't have many time here, but we, we got many possibilities. We expanded lots of possibilities. We can take a look on those, on those possibilities here. And on environmental elements, right? And natural forms on natural patterns and processes on lighting, lighting space. And we were talking about relationships of, of place as well and involved the human nature relationships. So we understood about some biophilic design techniques you can use and ways to improve your professional recognition as a sustainable interior designer. So you understand that you can use biophilia to enhance your sustainable interior design. This is so important to understand. And we understood also the differences between healthy and sustainable spaces. Sometimes a sustainable space is not going to be that healthier, that healthy, right? Or vice versa. So it's important that you address both things at the same time. Biophilic spaces that generates uh, sustainability and those uh, strategies that maybe you can have drawbacks as well, right? Biophilic spaces that generate health and spaces that uh, harm health as well. So we, we understand that we have differences between all those things. And 
Also, you understood, right, in practice, the, there is a more efficient way to have a sustainable and healthy projects. You understood that there is a, there are some paths that you can follow for that. You understand how to use nature uh, purposely, so not rendering projects. This is a, a, a way that you can go. And to think about sustainability and about sustainable materials in a more holistic way, right? We didn't told you, of course, about water efficiency. We didn't told you about uh, energy efficiency. We didn't told you about um, sustainable materials in, in a deeper level, of course. We didn't told you about um, thermal comfort. I already said thermal comfort, I think. I don't know. Uh, but I did. we didn't expand that, but you understood it the possibilities that you can use. And also, in addition to using knowledge together with technology. So we, uh, I was, I love to, yeah, acoustics. Yeah, thank you, Kabira. So uh, it's important that you understand that we need to use uh, technology with knowledge because just knowledge, you're not going to have a, a sustainable design because you need to use simulations, you need to use softwares, you need to use tech, uh, technology to enhance these possibilities. You, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but you won't have good possibilities if you are not making the simulations, if you are not using technology. And of course, you, if you are just downloading softwares, you go here to our classes and just ask softwares, oh, which software are you using? Uh, there is a question that we receive all the time just with the software you're not going to make good things as well because you want you don't understand the standards you don't, don't understand the process to get these possibilities to enhance your sustainable design so you don't understand that thermal comfort for example has a relationship with the 55 so you are just making some colorful pictures in software and you are not going to address this the right way or you are not ju just going to connect with uh certification or you are using for example a standard that is old this can be a problem as well, okay? So I wanted to, to you to take a look in those things and, and if it, it's making sense for you guys because we have next steps here to accelerate your results. Of course, it's up to you to be here in this, in this part of the class. If you don't want to be here, it's no problem at all, but we are going to expand here a possibility that you can be with us uh, over the next uh, month with us, okay? So let's go on. Next steps here. What is our proposal for you? We are going to create something new. We are having a mentoring now. It's called, uh, right now, this mentoring is closed. It's called Sustainability Consulting Mentoring. And it's going to be our, uh, an amazing, a fantastic experience for us here. And we are expanding our behind the scenes. We are showing companies, you uh, green behind the scenes for people. And they are understanding how they can uh, make better on their consultancy level. But if you want to expand the sustainability on interiors for your projects, we are going to have something very new here. It's the first time we are mentioning this. It's called Sustainable Interiors Project Experience. Okay, any questions about it, you can ask. But what is this? Okay, the Sustainable Interiors Project Experience is going to be like this. We are going to have... Um, the goal will be show the behind the scenes of sustainable interiors. So we are going to present projects, real situations that we are facing, and we are going to expand this on sustainable interiors. So we are going to teach you ways on how you can do sustainable interiors with real projects. So for example, as you can see right here, real practice with real projects, we are going to have four live classes. So this will be uh, um, a possibility that you can join us live and we are going to have a small group of people and we are going to create sustainable design in front of you actually. This is this will be the, the, the intent of this. So this will be a project experience with a sustainable project. So we are going to do that all in front of you and you are going to have the recordings available. So we are going to expand this and do that in front of you and you're going to have this recording. So for live encounters, first class, we are going to cover sustainable materials. So we are going to present how we do in practice, the path to get more sustainable materials for our projects, how we do that, how we find uh, 
the, 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 the nuts and bolts and all those things, okay? So we are going to present you, okay, just in more tools, how we address this, how we make our research, how we find labels, how you find uh, all the technical part. So we are going to show the behind the scenes in real projects. Then in the second class, we're going to cover natural and artificial light. So lots of simulation, lots of possibilities. We are going to do that in front of you as well with a real project possibility, right? So we're going to have this project and do that in front of you. And you are going to understand in one class of, we are going to have this, I think, a three hours class or something, three and a and some minutes. So four encounters with three hours more, or three, let's say three to, to four hours. And we are going to cover all the subjects. So we are going to present our process of doing things. Sustainable materials, natural and artificial light. Then we are going to talk about energy and water efficiency, how we address this just in interior design. So how we do that and acoustics and wellness. Of course, we are going to address in a fourth class, okay? So four classes with a small group of people, a selected group of people who wants to be in that and understand the possibilities of making sustainable interiors, okay? This will be our four live encounters. This structure will be like this. We are going to give you content within the four live encounters. Then after the class, we give you some orientations. Of course, you can ask during class and we, we make this live, we answer some questions there, but we have a, an orientation part in the end of the class. So you can have your questions. We are going to help you with, with, with you with this. Then we will have some processes. So some spreadsheets, some um, documents that we use to address this in our company. So it's going to streamline your results and we will have a follow-up as well on 30 days of follow-up in our groups. So it's going to be our mentoring process and our project experience process. So you're going to, to be with us in a project and expanding this, okay? So of course, there, there will be an investment for this. It's $497 for this uh, amazing event here. And we are going to have some bonuses for those who subscribe uh, on the uh, on this uh, on group here uh, for 24 hours. So our uh, bonus is going to be our biophilic design blueprint course. So this is our biophilic design. Uh, it's our complete course where we address all those things here that we said before, right? So all those strategies that we were talking here, all the 72 possible the 72 possible strategies we are going to address on the biophilic design blueprint course, you're going to have this for free, right? All 72 strategies and some more amazing things inside the course as well, all in detail, lots of process. We share also uh, uh, a class just talking about how we make reports for clients on this. We are going to have also the sustainable insurance briefing model. So if you want to share this with clients, you are going to have our briefing model to use. Our idea here is that you make sustainable interiors, right? So you can use our briefing model to, to have this for clients. We are going to have our proposal model as well for sustainable interiors as well and our chronogram, okay? So if you want to know the right time to make some strategies, we're going to share this with you guys as well, okay? The proposal model, the chronogram, the briefing model, all the possibilities here, okay? This will start in September. 13th, okay, so we have one month for this, for you to prepare and, and take things uh, of, of, your, of your desk, so we can start right away with this on September 13th, okay? This will be the links for the single payment of this mentoring, so I will open this for you guys. I will open this. This is the single payment, right? So that's a uh, uh, single payment. This is the, the link for single payment. And we have also a split payment option, okay? Split payment. And this will be our possibilities here. I will open this on YouTube. So this uh, is the link for the purchase. People on YouTube are asking for this. Nice. So single payment and split payment. You have three payments on split payment. It's a possibility that you can have. 
All right, guys, any questions you might have, you can ask here. I would love to address any of your questions. Okay, let's go on. We have some common questions here. I will just address while you are writing your questions. I would love to answer. You have our support channel. Let me uh, support channel is contato uh, ugreen.com.br. So this is our support channel as well. And I will share here with people also. Uh, people are asking here, uh, Angelica is asking, is there an exam to take at the end of the course? And do you give a certification? Yes, we are going to have this. Yes, it is important that you address this. Uh, we are going to have also, I will put here as, as, uh, as the bonus part, okay? Certificate is going to be a 16 hour certificate, okay? Maybe it can be 20. Let's see how classes goes, but this is going to be 16, uh, 16 hour certificate. And we are going to have a quiz in the end, okay? So we are going to have a, an assessment quiz in the end of the course. Assessment quiz for you to do. And of course, receive your certificate here. Very, very important question. Thank you, Angelica, for this question here. All right, so common questions. You maybe be asking, okay, yeah, will I be able to do that? Maybe you are a student, maybe you are just a newbie on the architectural field, you can do this. We are going to share all the details in the smallest part. We are going to, you're going to see us doing things live. So you can go doing what, you do, what we do and you are going to achieve sustainable insurance, okay? So this will be our project experience here. Uh, do you need it now? Right, it's up to you, of course. If you need this now, of course, it, it will be your, uh, your questioning. But if you want to go into sustainability, you understand that not just clients are requiring this. Sustainability is an issue everywhere. And you have companies, right? Big, bigger companies who want to address sustainability inside spaces. We are winning some competitions here because we are making sustainable designs and people are choosing us for this reason, for this particular reason. And maybe it can be your case as well. So it's uh, you are enhancing your possibilities. And let's see, if you start now, well, which benefits can you get? You can get in the short, medium and long term, right? So in the short term, you are going to uh, be a sustainable interior designer in the medium term, right? And in four, in four classes, you are going to understand the main possibilities on you to make interior design. You're going to have this acceleration process very quickly. So in the short term will be this. And of course, medium and long term, you can, can have a many amazing benefits with companies and things like, things like this and better clients, right? Because you are dealing with things that people are, are not even dreaming of doing actually. So this is a, 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 a thing as well. And let's see, uh, we will get a summary of today's class. Uh, we usually don't give summaries, okay? So just people who are inside our, our, our um, yeah. Thanks, Sammy. All right. I'm here. I'm yeah, here. Sammy's here. Thanks. All right, Sabine is asking, is this a course for lay people that are not educated in architecture and interior design? We uh, indicate people who are into the, those fields, okay? So if you are not into architecture and interior design, um, it depends on, on what you want to do, right? It's in, it's, it depends on what you uh, what uh, is your intentions. You can maybe describe me on email better because then I can see your current situation. If you have a situation like this, ask me on email and I will be glad to, to answer you. All right. Let's see uh, some other questions here. Can you, uh, you can ask me any questions you might have here, guys. I would love to address some more questions. Let's see, let's see. If you have any more questions, you can ask me here. And then we are going to leave the presentation. We have the Portuguese class. Uh, we have a Portuguese class also today, okay? Let's go on. Are you going to run this course later this year? No, we are not. It's, it's going to be this group here. And we, we don't plan another because we have other things to do here at Chugreen. And we decided to, to have this group here, but it's not uh, an intention for 
to have a second, not yet. Let's go on, let's see. Okay, Bianca, thanks. Can you re recommend me a good book about biophilia? You can uh, You can uh, go in Amazon and type biophilia, you're going to find some books there. Okay, let's see, uh, recap class. Um, let's see, yeah, yeah, we told you about biophilia before, right? Let's see, can you recommend me? Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, guys. All right, so that's it for today. Sam, you have some question? No. Okay, Sam, you don't have any questions as well. The question is, who is going to join us so we can go to the next level with the interior design? I think it's something that is going to be really cool. Something that has been requested many times. And I think uh, there's lots of things to develop in that area that we still have to, to cover. Yeah, exactly. Right? We have so many, so many possibilities there. We only started developing this part. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So we are going to have this sale for uh for 24 hours. You have the Biophilic Design Blueprint course as a bonus. And uh, can you uh, ask here, right? So we are going to have this. Uh, we are going to expand the sales part, but of course you have the bonus just for today. So it's a possibility that you can get here. Thanks for the recap class. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you for, for, thank you for a good class. Thanks guys. So you are welcome to join anytime and we are going to live here, okay? Uh, Zoom is freezing. Let's see. Okay, thanks guys. Have a great day and we see you there. Any questions? Let me just give you my uh, the support channel here again. And you can ask anything you want, okay? Uh, we know that sometimes you have many questions. Let's see, let's see. Let's go on. It's freezing my, my screen. Let's try to support channel. Let's uh, wait some seconds. Oh, Zoom is freezing. For some reason. Okay, support channel. I think we got this. And let me share here for people on YouTube. Uh, support channel, again. We don't have certificate for these classes, guys. Just for our courses, okay? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. I hope you understood the differences between biofilm design and sustainability. You can use these concepts for your designs. And, of course, if you want to join our amazing group here, you are more than welcome to see us and be with us on this amazing classes. Thank you. Have a great day and see you there. Bye-bye.